Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are continuing our discussion and coverage of the most recent Ninjago leaks, which of course came out this past weekend. Now, like I said in some of the other videos this week regarding these alleged leaks, these leaks could be 100% fabricated for all we know. There's not anything that suggests that these are real, however, these leaks are very hard to disprove, other than just assuming that they are fake. So for the purposes of this video, we will go with the assumption that these leaks are of course real. Now, like I said in previous videos, if you haven't been caught up to speed regarding these leaks, apparently over the weekend, the voice actress of Ultraviolet posted a couple of key Ninjago episodes for 2022 that were beginning the recording process, and of course, she as Ultraviolet is going to be recording for these two episodes. The episodes in question were known as Quit in Time and The Return of the Ice Emperor. Both of these titles caused a lot of discussion throughout the Ninjago community, and I myself have been talking about them over the past couple of days because these are quite the interesting set of leaks and we don't really have a lot of other information to go off of for 2022 theories so this is essentially all we have but like i said we've been actively discussing these episode names over the course of the last several videos but we've specifically been focusing on the second one the return of the ice emperor i theorize that the whole return of the ice emperor thing could in fact involve zane sneaking undercover in order to infiltrate a new villain team up thing that would explain a lot as to why ultraviolet is there and supposedly some other villains are going to be in this episode as well, so it would make sense for Zane to go undercover as his villain alias for when he was a bad guy during the season 11 saga. But we've already talked about that enough. I want to talk about the first episode that we have listed here, that of course being Quitten Time. This title could mean a variety of different things, but I've seen some folks in the Ninjago community suggest that this could mean that all of the ninja are going to be quitting following the departure of Nia towards the ending of Seabound. This is also something that we talked about in previous videos. Of course, following Seabound's conclusion, Nia promptly merged with her elemental power and quickly left the ninja for parts unknown. It's very obvious to me that she has no hard feelings with the ninja. She is just not a ninja anymore. She wants to do something else, and she recognizes herself as something more than a simple water ninja. She is the elemental power of water itself. Because of that, I've theorized that several other ninja team members might be feeling some type of repercussion following Nia's departure, specifically in the case of Kai and Jay. I've theorized in the past that Kai could turn to his dark roots and become a type of vigilante, not really caring about how he takes care of crime, but going about it in an extremely violent way. I've also theorized that Jay could mentally shut down and become kind of like a hermit type character, not really too concerned with being a ninja, as his mental state would probably not be in the best position for him to take up duties again as the lightning ninja. But because one of the new 2022 episodes is apparently called Quit in Time, a lot of folks are suggesting that all of the ninja could quit being a ninja following Nia's departure, and I feel like this would make sense if you thought about it. We saw something similar happen all the way back in Season 4 in Tournament of Elements when Zayn sacrificed himself. The ninja weren't really concerned with being ninja anymore. For example, Kai was basically a cage fighter, and Cole was a construction worker slash logger to an extent, and I'm not really sure if we're going to be seeing something similar. Back then, the only ninja that was basically focused on being a ninja was Lloyd, and of course, following the departure of Zayn, not a lot of other ninja wanted to be ninja ninja anymore. We could see something similar happen in the next installment for Ninjago, considering how Nia's departure probably hit a lot harder than Zayn's sacrifice ever did. The only reason I say that is because when Nia sacrificed herself, the ninja team had been together for a longer period of time. They had had a longer time period to actually grow together and recognize each other as family. Back when Zayn sacrificed himself, the ninja team were there, but I feel like now they're a lot more solid, if that makes sense. And following Nia's departure at the ending of Ninjago, Seabound, it very well could have disrupted the entire flow of the ninja team, causing all of the ninja to quit, very similar to season 4 when Zane was gone. To me, that would make a fair bit of sense. And going back to some other Ninjago theories that we had mentioned previously on this channel, if the Ninjago city, I guess citizenship, is unhappy with the ninja following Seabound's tragic battle of Ninjago City, I feel like that would be more of an incentive for the ninja to actually quit being ninja. If they personally do not feel it necessary to be ninja, Ninja anymore following Nia's tragic loss, then having the Ninjago city population be mad at you for destroying their city probably would not help. Now, I do understand that it was primarily Wajira and her rampage that destroyed Ninjago city, but considering how this is probably the worst that Ninjago city has ever gotten it over the course of Ninjago being a thing, I think it's safe to say that not everybody who lives in 
Ninjago City will be fully optimistic in keeping the ninja around. In that case, I could totally see the ninja quitting just so that the citizens of Ninjago could feel safe in some way. That they don't have to worry about the constant threat of enemies rising in Ninjago City simply because the ninja are there. I don't know about you guys, but if I personally lived in Ninjago City, I wouldn't really want the ninja there anymore either after this point. It just feels like wherever they are, danger is also there, and we've seen what destruction that can actually cause. As was the case with several invasions of Ninjago City, the worst of which being the most recent one, that of course being Wajira's flooding of the entire Ninjago landscape. So I could totally see the ninja quitting just based off of sheer pressure from the Ninjago population. The only thing that I could say going against this is that it would seem kind of repetitive, and I'm not exactly certain that this is the route that Ninjago will take. Like I said, it's kind of a retread of what they did during Season 4. With Zane gone, the ninja no longer were ninja, and they very much did not want to be ninja. With Nia gone, I feel like it's going to be a little different. I feel like the ninja will still be ninja, obviously, but they will go about it a little bit of a different way. I feel like they might all split up individually and focus on solo missions, similar to what we saw during the beginning of Sons of Garmadon, before of course they were reunited by Lloyd, or we could potentially see Jay be the only one that would quit. Otherwise, I feel like Kai will definitely need to focus and channel his anger somewhere else, hence why he would become a violent vigilante, and the other ninja, those of course being Lloyd, Zane, and Cole, could still be operating as a trio of sorts, a group of three while Jay is trying to recover and Kai is off doing whatever Kai will be doing. I'm very much expecting the ninja to still be around to an extent and still be ninja, so I don't think that they will go this route. I feel like the show will have them remain as ninja, maybe with some setbacks like I said, but I don't feel like we will see every single ninja quit. Then what exactly is the point of the episode name Quit in Time? What exactly could that be referring to? Well, I do have another theory regarding what I actually think is going on revolving around that title, and it does coincide with the return of the Ice Emperor title and the fact that Ultraviolet will be returning. I feel like the term Quit in Time might actually refer to the villains, and that these two episodes might focus on the villains' escape from Cryptarium Prison and their inevitable team up. This could involve the Vengestone buyer, could not, that of course remains up for debate, but it would explain why Ultraviolet is back in these two episodes specifically. These two episodes could indeed focus on the villains. Now in terms of the title Quit in Time, what exactly could that be referring to? Well, the term Quit in Time in the general sense of the world is often used to describe the ending of the work day, the ending of the work period if you will. When people get off work they usually clock out and say, oh it's quit in time, and I feel like in the context of the Ninjago villains this could describe their quit in time if you will from prison, them escaping Cryptarium. I feel like that's what the episode name quit in time is referring to. The villains are just straight up leaving jail, leaving prison, escaping prison, and as such they are essentially getting off of their version of work, hence the title Quit in Time, and I feel like this could actually be used to describe the villains escape from Cryptarium Prison. This would eventually tie into the next episode, The Return of the Ice Emperor, where the ninja need to send in their own recruit undercover in order to uncover these villain plans and actually infiltrate their team, and the Ice Emperor would come into play in that regard. Like I said in previous videos, Zane could immediately discuss himself as the Ice Emperor and slip through the cracks of this villain team-up organization thing, whatever you want to call it, but eventually Ultraviolet might actually find out what's going on, because as I mentioned in previous videos as well, Zane had pulled the stunt before back when he was Snake Jaguar during the Sons of Garmadon era. I feel like the term quit in time is definitely a lot more likely to apply to the bad guys of Ninjago and could very well feature the villains escaping from Cryptarium. The return of the Ice Emperor could be the part two of this episode and could feature the ninja attempting to infiltrate this new villain team up after they've all escaped from prison and potentially actually met up with the Vengestone buyer, whatever that actual plan might look like. Regardless though, I don't feel like the term quit in time is going to be referring to the ninja quitting the ninja team or anything like that. I feel like the team itself is going to be extremely solid still following Nia's departure, even though Nia's loss was a pretty obvious and pretty big one for the ninja team, the remaining ninja are still very much capable of becoming ninja and staying that way. And if they added new members such as Skylar or even other elemental masters to their arsenal, I feel like the ninja team will definitely be unstoppable in the next season. I don't feel like they will be quitting their positions as ninja or anything like that. Like that, but it is something worth talking about. I just wanted to go ahead and give my thoughts on that. If I personally had to suggest and predict what's going to be going on in the episode Quit in Time, it will probably be focusing on the villains quitting Cryptarium Prison, if you will. So I feel like Ninjago fans can rest assured I don't think the ninja team is going to be splitting up. If they do, I would be curious to see how they would actually differentiate that from what happened during season four, but I'm very much optimistic no matter what Ninjago decides to do. No matter what route they take, I'm going to still be curious to see how 
how they handle it and what they will be doing differently if this is really about the ninja team truly quitting and going their separate ways. Otherwise, I personally think it's just about the bad guys doing their own thing and quitting their day jobs, if you will, to move on to something greater. With all that being said, you guys, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today regarding this subject. Leave a comment down below talking about what you think about these two episodes. What do you think the episode Quit in Time could potentially be referring to? And if you're interested, feel free to do the same for the Return of the Ice Emperor episode as well. The comment section is yours for any discussions that you would like to have. And like I said, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts in this video here today. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you enjoyed, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description for my other forms of social media. As always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again the marvelous Jan. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video once again. My name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.